Good evening. This is the first lecture in Graphic Design 1, and tonight we'll be covering the basics of logo design. The source for this information has come from Logo Design Love, a guide to creating iconic brand identities, the second edition by David Airy. So let's go ahead and get started to, uh, in talking about the basics of logo design. So in Logo Design Lo Love, they lay out a recipe for creating a great logo. So anyone can design a logo, but very few can design the right logo. A truly in inviolable design will be simple, relevant, enduring, distinctive, memorable, and adaptable. This many requirements might seem like a tall order, and it is. But remember, you have to know the rules in any creative endeavor before you can successfully break them. So the, here are the seven rules, or as David Airy says in the text, the recipe to create an iconic ide identity. So first is keep it simple. And you may have heard of the acronym KISS, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid. The simplest solution is often the most effective. But why is this? Well, simplicity helps the design be more versatile. Adopting a minimalist approach enables your logo to be used across a wide range of media from business cards to billboards. Simplicity also makes your design easier to recognize, so it stands a great chance of achieving a timeless, enduring quality. And finally, simplicity aids in memorability. Consider how our minds work. And how much easier it is to remember a single detail than it is to remember five. And on the left, we have the logo for the British Broadcasting Company, Mitsubishi, and FedEx. And if you, there is a hidden little element in the FedEx logo that I'll let you try to find. Number two, make it relevant. Any logo you design must be appropriate for the business it identifies. So if you're designing for a lawyer, ditch the fun approach. If you're designing for a winter holiday TV program, don't put beach balls in it. How about a cancer organization? A smiley face probably won't be the, the most appropriate thing. There are more examples, but I think you, by this point you get the picture. So your design must be relevant to the industry, your client, and the audience to which you are catering. Without strong knowledge of your client's world, you can't hope to create a design that successfully differentiates your client's business from its closest competitors. This does not mean that a logo must go as far as to literally reveal what a company does. BMW's logo is, is not a car, and the, the Hawaiian Airlines logo isn't an, isn't an airplane. Both stand out from, the, from competitors and are relevant within their respective markets. So on the left-hand side, we have BMW's new logo. It just got updated in 2020, earlier this year. And then we also, right below it, we have the Hawaiian Airlines logo. So the BMW logo is historic, all the way, dating all the way back to, uh, to 1917, 1916, 17. It hasn't changed much over the 100 or so years that BMW has been around. Uh, I think the 1917 logo is gold and black with a serif typeface. And here we have it being gray, blue, and a lot more modern. It actually looks really cool uh, on their on their cars because the the uh, gray outline is raised, and then the BMW is actually on the metal, and then the interior blue and white section is then raised again. So it's it's a lot different than the old BMW logo, which had a black inner circle and it was just like this piece of metal slapped on the car. Now it's like individual pieces. It's, it's a really neat look uh, on, on 
on the cars. And then we have Hawaiian Airlines, and this is just kind of showing the spirit of Hawaii, more so than the fact that it is anything about planes and travel. Uh, so those are two logos that that they don't necessarily say what they are, but they're easily recognizable and they are relevant to the industry and they speak to a very specific client. So moving on, we're going to, we will want to incorporate tradition. So when it comes to logos, it is best to leave trends to the fashion industry. Trends come and go. And the last thing you want to do is invest significant amount of time of your time and your client's money in a design that will become dated almost overnight. Longevity is key and a logo should last for the duration of the business it represents. It might get refreshed after some time to add a little freshness, but the underlying idea should remain intact. Next, we want to aim for distinction. A distinctive logo has a unique quality or style that accurately portrays your client's business perspective. So how is this accomplished? The best strategy is to focus initially on a design that is recognizable. In fact, that, in fact, that just its shape or outline gives it away. Working in only black and white can help you create more distinctive marks, since the contrast emphasizes the shape or idea. Color, although important, really is secondary to the shape and form of your design. So I've taken two really classic logos that we probably don't very often see in black and white, and that's Girl Scouts of America and, um, and NBC. And they're both still very easily recognizable in one color, in black and white. So when we are designing any logo, we're going to start in black and white. We're always going to design in black and white. And it talks about this a little, we talk about this a little bit later in this, in this lecture, but if I was to design a logo in a color, say I choose, we'll just, we'll go with, with red and blue and green. And I was to pre present the client and I didn't show each logo in, in those three colors. So I, I show, I show one logo in red, one logo with blue and blue and the third logo in green. Well, the client might hate green. So if my best logo is in green, that, that design is going to be immediately ruled out. However, if I present it the same three in black and white, there's less likely an opportunity for the client to disregard the design, the best design, because of, because of color. They can focus on the concept that is being presented in the design rather than an attention to a color that they like or don't like. So next, commit to memory. A solid logo design is one that onlookers will remember after just one quick glance. But how do you focus on this one element of logo design? Start by thinking of the logos you remember the most. So which ones stick in your head? What comes up when you, when you start thinking just about logos in the world? You know, I think of Target. But and like Honda or Hyundai. So what makes those logos memorable? Keep that in mind as you begin to sketch. It also helps to limit the time you spend on each sketch idea. You know, try 30 seconds per idea. You want viewers, you want a viewer's experience with, or you want viewers experiences with your client's visual identity to be such that the logo is remembered the instant they see it. The next time. So this is New Bedford Whaling Museum and this logo combines the tail fin of a whale with the sail of a ship and this this unique use of negative space 
provide allows for a very me memorable mark. As a matter of fact, when I was as I was putting together this presentation and I came across this this logo in the book, I immediately recognized the mark. Did I recognize it as the new Bedford Whaling Museum? No, to be honest, but I recognized the mark. So it it, it stuck in my head over the time of of at least my teaching career, which is has been 10 years and probably earlier than that because it was designed in in 2005 so it's a very memorable memorable mark and a recognized logo easily recognized logo think small your logo must be adaptable as much as you might want to see your work plastered across billboards don't forget that your design may also need to accommodate smaller yet necessary applications such as zipper pulls and clothing labels. In creating something versatile, simplicity is key. A solid logo should ideally work at a minimum size of one inch without loss of detail. So when we design, usually when we design our logos, we'll put the logo in a in the upper third of an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper, and then we'll take the logo and then we'll reduce it down to that one inch, just to make sure it's legible at a super small size. Um, and to be fair, when we not necessarily with the mark, and we're not really talking about the uh, the anatomy of a logo but when you have so in this uh and i'm gonna say the name wrong the Su sugo logo here you have uh on the left here this symbol is what we call a mark and then the type is called the logo type okay and then all of it together is your logo Okay, so this first project is called, or this first exercise is called Design a Personal Logo, but we're going to focus on the mark aspect of it. Okay. So, and, and my point was going to be is if we took this logo and we blew it up so it was massive on the side of the building, we may go in and adjust the kerning, which is the space in between the two letter forms, a little bit, or we may change ever so slightly the mark. I'm, you know, I'm talking very, very minor adjustments. The same thing can happen when you reduce your logo really down in size. It can change ever so slightly. So your, your outside rule on this shape may get a little bit thicker the kerning might change because of the size so that it may may increase because of this because of the smaller size so that our logo is legible so there are some alterations that can be made but those are things that those are bending the rules not so much breaking them but you have to know all these other things so it's better to, to design a logo first that just works at you know six sixty feet wide and one inch okay so let's do that first before we jump into all the little um minute uh changes that you you'll eventually make as as your design career progresses when you're when you are in a position where you're working on a major brand that's gonna be on the side of a building as well as on a business card. We're not doing that right now. So next and last is we need to focus on one thing. Effective logo designs that stand apart from the crowd have just one feature to help with differentiation. That's it, just one, not two, 
three, or four. You want to leave your client with just one thing to remember about your design. Remember, your client's customers are going to give your, your design one quick glance, and then they'll be gone. You think about today, and I can't recall when this, I'm going to look real quick when this book was published. So this was published in 2015, five years ago, so still a problem then. But you got to think that we're on our phones, we're looking at our phones, and if we put our logo up on a, say it's a store logo, it's, you know, on the, on the storefront as we walk by, how many seconds are you really going to, it's going to catch somebody's eye from the corner of their eye from looking at their phone, possibly, right? Or there's so much, if you think about Broadway, there's so much other stuff going on on Broadway in downtown Columbus that your attention is, is everywhere. So that's that one quick glance that David Airy keeps referencing. Okay. So with this element, we want to focus on one thing within the, the logo. So the design for the French property exhibition was created to represent the French flag, but focused on one relevant attribute of property, and that was the open door, which welcomes everyone in. It's absolutely brilliant. The designer could have easily added another mark to the design, perhaps something obvious that resembled the shape of the Eiffel Tower. After all, everyone would immediately equate that with France. But then he'd force the viewer, the viewer to consider an unnecessary element, making the design less memorable. Okay, so let's review the seven ingredients for a successful design, a logo. First, keep it simple. The simplest solution is often the most effective. Second, make it relevant. Any logo you design must be appropriate for the business it identifies. Three, incorporate tradition. Remember that trends come and go. Next, aim for distinction. Focus on a design that is easy, easily recognizable. Next, commit to memory. Quite often, one quick glance is all the time you get to make an impression. Six, think small. Your logo should ideally work at a minimum of around one inch in size without loss of detail. And finally, number seven, focus on one thing. Incorporate just one feature to help your designs stand out. So remember that rules are made to be broken, broken. By sticking to the rules for creating iconic designs, you stand a greater chance of delivering timeless and enduring logos that impress and excite your clients. But can you do more? And do you always need to play by the book? Keep in mind that rules can always be broken or bent. It's up to you to tread new paths in your attempts to create designs that are cut, a cut above the rest. Whether your results are successful is another matter, but you'll learn so much more and so much faster when any potential mistakes are your own rather than someone else's. So that kind of ties into our why take risks. Uh, and, and the re and the reason the reason the reason that taking risks is part of key a uh, key to success in the graphic design curriculum. So I included our exercise one project description, and I want to go over that with with you guys. So you're going to be developing a personal logo, and as I mentioned on the um, think small slide that in all reality we're going to create a mark rather than a logo because we're not going to focus on logo type but we're going to focus on the mark of the logo so the objective and kind of the overview of the project is designing for yourself is one of the most difficult things to accomplish creating a personal logo 
will be the design you revisit the most in your profession professional career. I myself have developed at least between, or between five and seven versions of my logo before settling on the mark that I have now started to aggressively populate with all my branding and various social media accounts. While this project may seem easy in description, we will walk through the process in a demo video to follow. So your assignment, everyone in the world, whether they've taken a design class or not, has a basic understanding of typography because we utilize it every day. And we'll go into, into more of that. And if you watched um, the Paula Share video, which you, you got sent over the weekend, uh, she explains in much greater detail what that, how we interact with type. And it is with this basic knowledge and, only, and using only your initials, you're being asked to create a personal logo in Adobe Illustrator. There should be no illustrative elements, so no rabbits, flowers, hands, etc. Only type. And we're going to look at in the demo how we can create typographic elements without using any fonts in our computer library. And we'll take a look at, like I said, we'll take a look at that. So how can we create an even more unique mark by not using fonts? Okay, not to say that you can't use fonts, but I want to show you how you can create something without ever touching the font menu in Illustrator. So what do we have to do? We have to watch the demo that I have supplied where I walk you through the process of developing a typographic mark. You're going to spend about five to ten minutes developing thumbnail sketches to work out several solutions before moving on the computer. Another way to look at this is the time that it takes to brew two pots of coffee. Okay, That's how long I sketched before this. I got about 30 sketches in. All right. And we'll, you'll see what I, what I came up with in the demo. I don't want to get too far out ahead of myself. The logo specifications, so what you're going to need to create and how you're going to need to create this is you're going to work in Adobe Illustrator. Your logo, your final logo that you are to turn in is to be centered on a 6x6 six six inch square artboard. You're going to design in black and white only, no grayscale. And it's going to be type only, no illustrative elements. So the deliverables, what you're going to turn in, they're due Tuesday, September 1st by 11.59 p.m. And remember, that's on both Google Drive and on Cougar View. So I want you to name your files, last name, dash first name, dash logo, dot AI. And the, A, the dot AI stands for an Adobe Illustrator file. So when you save directly from Illustrator, it will automatically save your file as a dot AI file. But I want you to name it in the way that's shown on the screen. And you're also going, going to save it as a PDF, and I'll walk you through that when we do the demo, which is last name, first name, dash logo dot PDF. Now I'm, I'm asking you to name your files in this way as part of the project. So if you don't have your files named correctly, you will receive points off. If you do use fonts, you need to outline all your text which means select all the text that you have, you, you have used. And then the Mac keyboard shortcut for this is Shift plus Command plus O. And the PC keyboard shortcut is Shift plus Control plus O. I'll show you in the demo where it is within the Illustrator interface. But as you will find throughout this course that keyboard shortcuts are the key to becoming efficient as a graphic design professional. And I will be using a lot of them, and I'll try to remember to go through the vocalize 
the, the keyboard shortcuts as I'm doing the demos. Next, you're going to upload your files into your folder on the GD1 Google Drive. And everybody should have received an invitation to that Google Drive. And you have, should have created a folder on that drive with your first and last name. Now, when you upload this exercise into your folder, you need to create and name a project folder, ex one Dash personal logo and place your files in that. So this is part of staying organized. You have to be super organized as a designer. So you have to make sure that you have an organize you've organized all your all your files and, and, and folders. Now one key thing on this you is you have to make sure that you're uploading it to the shared GD1 Google Drive folder. Um, I've had in some in the past some students upload it to their own personal folder and then claim that they did it and f come to find out that they they thought they had uploaded it to the shared drive and they had only uploaded it to their own personal folder. So you need to make sure that you are uploading these files to the shared the GD1 shared Google Drive folder in the folder that has your name on it and within a folder called ex1-personallogo. Probably made that way too complicated, but it is what it is. Next, I need you to post a JPEG of your logo in the discussion topic entitled ex1-personallogo on Cougar View, and I will show you how to export a, export a JPEG out of Illustrator in the demo. So that is our first exercise. So we have until the 1st of September to complete it. And it's a, it's a relatively simple project. Uh, like I said, you will probably revisit the, uh, the logo more than once in your career. Now you could develop this logo in GD1 and use it for the your, the entirety of your college career um, and some people may continue to use the logo throughout their professional career but I know personally I've had to go back and, and develop mine I'm just kind of indecisive like that so if you have any questions about this presentation please feel free to shoot me an email and I will uh, I'll do my best to answer the questions. Once again, the text that this information came from is Logo Design Love, a guide to creating icon iconic brand identities. It's the second edition by David Airy. And I can tell you right now that the cover price is $40. So probably between 20 and 25 on Amazon. But what I will probably end up doing is any book that I reference for our lectures, I will create a tab in the content section on Cougar View and put a link to Amazon. So if you're interested in getting that book, it will be there and available for you guys just to click on once you're in Cougar View. So thank you for your time tonight. And like I said, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email.